Portard everyone, how's it going? Welcome to this week's video, thank you for joining us. Uh, first and foremost I want to say a massive thank you to everybody for the well wishes and the get better messages for the broken ribs, it really is appreciated. Quite strange to have such a support network really, so thank you very much. Lots to do this week, not that I can do any of it. <laughs> We've got another glorious week of weather, so we've got a few odd jobs we need to get done and a few random semi-exciting jobs that we're going to get done. So yeah, I've managed to task Carissa with a load of jobs and I can't do any of them, so I'm just going to film her and watch. Well over here where you can see the ladder we have the picotta attached and we're going to try and remove it and attach it to the well over here that is next to the veggie garden because I think it'd be more useful there and this one did snap so it needs fixing anyway. So this is the attached picotta, it's a really long stick, I don't know where the previous owner found such a tall tree to use but it's such a cool little old traditional way of getting water out of the well so we want to use it. You can see how tall it is by how short Yuan looks. <laughs> Yuan just said this is going to be difficult which is always the kind of challenge we like to take on so try not to fall in the well. It's just attached with like a bolt going through this metal thing um, so I think we need to lift it up uh, we'll just film it and give it a go and you can see what we try and do. So this is the very long pole yeah. and it has a big, it had a big stone on the end. <laughs> he was just taking it off, I'll show you. Oh. So this was what was attached and this is the the weight that helps pull the bucket up. So it's an old millstone or something. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah.
That's one big bit of wood. We just realised before we were going to put it up, but thinking about it, we should probably attach the new piece of wood to the to the dunking bit before we put that back up. Otherwise, it's going to be really high up in the air. So, <laughs> so yeah, we'll do that. I think. She's had a crazy idea. Yeah, the problem is, I mean, you can quite see this little metal bit. Ooh, doing all this in reverse. This little metal bit here needs to sit on top of that so we can get the little thing through it. But it's tricky because I can't lift it up properly because of my ribs. And it's very heavy. It does look very cool, doesn't it? Yeah. So what my thinking is this, we can put this, push up this in. Oh, okay, there. 
whilst you're pushing up here. Yeah, yeah. But things I still think you'd need a third person yeah. to be on top of the ladder. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah, yeah. I've got that. Because yeah. then you can move a bit more easily. So if you try and go forward. Well, just you try to do this. Hey, almost. I can't do much more. No, that's fine. Yeah. Sorry, enough here now. <laughs> came out. It's it's pretty high on the dodgy list. <laughs> So the Pocotta is all nicely set up here. We were a little bit concerned about the pressure point where it's held on, whether that's going to cause it to snap. So we might add some like rebar or something to there to give it a bit more strength. But it's great because we have this well here and we haven't had proper rain in two weeks, maybe longer. It looks like another week until we get any more. So I've been watering my veg garden, which I've been working on looking a lot tidier. I'll show you in another video when I finished it. Yeah I've been wa watching that by scooping out from the well but as the well gets lower I can't reach it so it's gonna be really cool to just be able to grab a bucket from the well using this. I did do a little bit of reading about the picotta. It's known um, worldwide as a shadouf which I think comes from Arabic and they actually used this kind of a contraption in 3000 BC is the oldest records of it and they used it a lot in e places like Egypt so yeah it's a really just like very clever way of getting water out of a well and still very useful 5000 years later. Super happy to have this in use here I just think it looks really cool as well I love driving up to the land now and we can just see this enormous stick sticking out so yeah, hopefully that's going to help me keep my garden happy. This is the well I'm using, so as you can see the water level is at the step, so easy to scoop a watering can into, but this drops many, many metres in the heat of summer. We've got um, pondweed growing on it at the moment, which is actually really good for the health of the, the water. It's not like algae, but I don't know why it's getting bleached. I don't know if that's the sun or... not sure. This is the one single loofah I managed to grow and it was still green when I picked it and I've left it drying and I think it's dry enough now. It sounds very dry so I'm going to peel it and see what it looks like inside. There's a loofah. So we have a few mouldy bits but I can just cut them off. But that's really cool. It's basically, basically grow a sponge. So I'm going to try again some more this year. These are quite hard to grow I'm finding here. Um, I grew one the first year and then that just rotted and then this one was the only one that actually grew. The flowers that the loofah grows on as well are just absolutely beautiful. So worth growing just for that. Oh, I'm happy there's some seeds in here. I've managed to collect five usable seeds and I think I may have a few more left in my seed box and I'm going to wait till sort of mid-March, beginning of April to sow these and I was just reading they do take a long time to grow so it's good to start them early and then should be able to harvest in September 
and you're best to leave them on the vine to dry out to this brown colour rather than picking them green. But I had to because these was this would have rotted in the wet. But I'm absolutely chuffed. Right, so how to operate a strimmer lesson. <laughs> lessons by you. Yeah. Right, so first things first, make sure it's turned on because you don't want to waste time on that. Right, secondly, underneath your left hand there is a primer. So press that about five or six times. And lift the choke up. Yep. And then you need to pull it. You go lefty or go righty. Close. There you go. Easy. So we're pruning this vine here. Yes. I'm going to do this one and show you properly my thinking behind pruning grapes because we get quite a few questions about it and it is quite confusing at first. So it's kind of like a suit, like a suit's not going to fit everybody. So you have to tailor a suit to different people. And with wild vines like these, they've not been trained onto a trellis or trained in any particular method so it's kind of like trying to make sense of what you've got tailor it to how it's been planted yeah so you can see on this one it's because it's quite badly trained all of these bunches here were far too close together with all the leaves and foliage that you um that the grapes just aren't very good quality and they're pretty susceptible to to uh disease and stuff which is what happened here so what we need to do is take this vine right back. So at the moment we've got one, two, three, like proper spurs. That's probably too many. So we need to pick ones to get rid of. So I think this one makes the most sense. Let's chop and we'll keep these two. So we'll chop this one off. I'll be will chop it off. <laughs> Just when the saw comes out. <laughs> Come here. Should we do this? There we go. It's not the healthiest of vines. Right, so now that we know roughly where we're focusing our energy on, it's where the grapes will grow. So these here are last year's growth. So these are where the grapes will stroke should grow. With these kind of vines, they, they will just grow anywhere. But that's basically the idea. So four is too many, so we'll take this off. And we're left with two new growing sites for the season. And then, and it's kind of up to you on this one really, but if you notice, the grape here is on the first, second, third, fourth bud, which is generally the case. So we definitely don't want four buds. So what we'll do here is take three and save the rest, or save three. So these, these are what we mean by yeah. bud. And then again on this side, we'll do the same. So Frankie. just one, two, three. Some people say four, some people say two, some people say six, totally up to you. But these vines seem to like being pruned quite hard, so. And that's what we've noticed all the locals do as yeah. well. Yeah, some of them prune a lot harder. Um, right, as for things like these, what we're going to call these is renewal spurs. So they eventually, the idea will be to cut this off, this whole arm here, and this one will replace it. So we definitely don't need three buds, so we'll just save two. And then what you can do is in spring, 
If it's a bit too vigorous, you can cut all the leaves off or cut the stem down. But that will keep producing buds for the next few years. And then the same with this one, which is massive. So again, eventually with this one, what we'll do is we'll cut this here and we'll be left with this, which will be a new vine. So this has got a lot on it, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. It needs to come back quite a bit. So now you're left with a choice. Do you want to go more horizontal or more upwards? So I think I'm going to go horizontal. Yeah, because otherwise they go into the trees more. Yeah. So again, actually, we'll just take, we'll just save two buds on this one because it's quite a thick stem, so it should give quite a good bit of growth. Um, so there we go, and then. Yeah, we'll leave these ones on. They look good. <laughs> Two buds each. And there we have it. So we should have fruit growing from these two, these two, and these two. Last year it was more like 12. <laughs> <laughs> the bit you've cut off is dripping. Yeah, bleeding. That's all the sap coming out. Totally natural, it'll do it for a couple of days to try and heal itself. Ideally make sure the cuts are, are vertical or at least diagonal, so then if it does rain or anything like that then it does drip off. Oh yeah. Good job. There you have it. got lots of wild asparagus growing here. It's a very spiky uh, plant. And uh, just here, I don't know if it's going to focus very well. And it's in shadow, but that's tiny asparagus, <laughs> basically. So it's looking a lot tidier along here, and the trees are happier. And then I've done 10 bundles so far. My aim is to get to about 300 at least because I think that's how many fires we start in a year normally. One in the morning, one in the evening in the winter. But yeah, super happy to have these ready for next winter. So we're currently buying bags of kindling that I think are like three to four euros and we probably get five fires out of that. So I'm thinking 10 of these bundles will give us 10 fires so if I do 10 a day saving us 8 euros <laughs> it takes me about an hour so 8 euros an hour and it's an absolutely lovely job to sit out in the sunshine creating these so win-win and also there is rules in Portugal with land maintenance I think it's by the end of March we have to have everything cleared to avoid any fires so this needs clearing up anyway we would probably have to burn it if we didn't do something like this and if we do burn it we put the ash on the garden but this way the ash still ends up in the garden but it warms us up first. Now it's a tiny bit windy but not too bad so I think I'm going to take advantage of this sunshine and go have a shower and then I think we're going to do a bit more pruning, we've got a few trees to plant. We shall see what we get up to today. Mm. 
Das fährst du nicht so sieht. So our tree potting mix is one part homemade compost. Looking really good. It's looking really good, as you can see. One part Diogo. One part Diogo. One part coarse sand to aid drainage. And then whatever we dig out of the hole. Yeah. Spin it. Easy. like a donut around it as well helps mm -hmm. the water. I think Chris is getting tired of digging. Yeah. Yeah. Dogs is helping. Go on. Good boy. Good girl. Go on. Get it Frankie, get it. There's a badger in there. <laughs> So this tree is, in Portuguese, it's known as tilia, um, but it's a linden blossom in English. That's right, right? Yep, and you can make tea. You can make tea from the leaves or the flowers? I think the flowers, and they smell amazing. They do smell amazing. And they grow very, very quickly. Up to, yeah, I think they can get to like 10 meters in three years or something like that, so. So I will tie up the video here. I hope you've enjoyed this week. We've got some good stuff coming up. Hopefully with this weather, we're going to have some some warmth coming back so that we're more comfortable doing the cementing because we really don't want to do all that work and then for it to crack and for the safety of the chickens. Um, I don't know how correct we are about the cement potentially cracking as it's freezing every night, but better to be safe than sorry. There's plenty always to do and we've finally had a shed delivered so I'm super excited to get that up because that's the first step towards us being able to put some work into the big barn building because we need to empty it before we can do anything so yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a good 
next few months uh, of projects. We still have a lot of vines to prune. The garden, you know, spring is on its way, so there's lots to do there. Um, so yeah, stay tuned and don't forget we'll be filming a Q&A soon. So if you have any questions, please do leave them for us below and we'll put them all in a video for you. And thank you for all your super interesting questions so far. Um, but yeah, Virginia's see you soon. <laughs>